Hey everyone, in this video we're going to take a look at how to, fi to find the longest substring in a string without repeating characters. So for example, in the string that we have here, we have a, b, a, c, d, a, b, c, c, a. So the longest substring, and there's actually going to be three of them here, the longest substring is going to be b, a, c, d, and then we have c, d, a, b, and we have d, a, c, b. So we only have to find one of these, and we're only going to, in this case, find the first one, which is totally fine because it's still a longest substring. So the way we're going to do this is we're going to employ a sliding window. And we actually referred to this in a past video where we looked at how to find the longest substring with repeating characters. Well, in this case, we're going to do it without repeating characters. And we're going to update our sliding window whenever we find a unique character or when we find a character that's been used. So pretty much we'll expand the window if we find a unique character and we'll shorten the window if we find a character that we've already used. And in this case, because we're dealing with unique characters, we'll use a set to keep track of those current characters. A set is going to be the fastest way to deal with all this because it has a very quick append time, a quick search time, and a quick remove time complexity. So let's see this in action. So I'll just erase these and let's write out the characters as well as their indices. So we have A, B, A, C, D, a, B, C, C, A. And then associated with these characters, we have the indices 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, and 9. All right. So now that we have these, we can start our sliding window. So we'll start our lower bound and upper bound at 0 and 1, respectively. So right here, we'll say that this is our lower bound and this is our upper bound. And we'll keep the lower bound exclusive and the upper bound inclusive. That basically means that our lower bound and upper bound are only counting the characters that are starting from the lower bound itself and ending right before the upper bound. So at this point, our sliding window is telling us that A is the character that is the longest substring without repeating characters. Of course, that's not true. But when we initially start, this is how we're going to do it. Now, before we start traversing, we need to create our set. So let's just call it some set used. And let's start it off as being equal to some set that contains the first character. So here we'll start with A. And the reason we're doing that is because we're anyway starting there. So let's just mark that as used. Now the final thing before we start traversing is we need to actually be able to keep track of our maximum bounds. So the way we're actually going to know which string or which substring is the longest is we're going to know the upper bound and the, lo the lower and upper bound of that substring. So we'll have to create some sort of variable that keeps track of those two numbers. So let's call it some max bounds. So max bounds. And just to start, let's set it equal to 0, 1. Again, 0 is inclusive, 1 is exclusive, just like we did with the lower and upper bound up here. OK, now we can start traversing. So here, we see that up is at index 1. So the character at index 1 is b. Well, is B in used? No, it's not. So we can add it to used. So let's add it to used. Now we have B there. And let's increase up by one. So now up is at index two. Now before we move on, before we check up or low again, we have to update max bounds. So currently, the maximum bounds that we have is from zero to two. That's going from low to up. So we have to check, is the difference of one minus zero greater than two minus zero? Well, it's not in this case, which means that our max bounds is actually now at 0, 2. So we have to update this. This is going to be 0, 2. OK, now we can move on. So the character at the upper bound here is A. Well, we've already used A. So we have to remove that character from our set. So we can remove A from here. And we'll just shift B down. And at this point, we can shift low up. So low is going to be right here, and we've effectively compressed our window. Now at this point, we again want to check, are the current bounds of a greater length than the max bounds? Well, 1 comma 2, that's, that has only a length of 1. And 2 minus 0 is 2. So 2 is obviously greater than 1, which means that our max bounds is going to stay as it is. OK, let's continue. So the character at index up, well, up is still at 2. We never changed that. So we can see that up is character A. Well, character A is not currently in our used set. So we'll update that. So now we have that. 
and we can adjust our upper bound. So we can increase that there. And now we can see that our max bound, it goes from one to three. Well, the difference there, three minus one is two and two minus zero is two. So there's no difference there. So we don't have to update max bounds. So we can generally repeat this process until we get that up reaches the end of the string. So let's actually speed some stuff up here. So we'll see that we can move up once again. So we'll put up here, we'll add the character C. Of course, we'll do that before we move up. And then we'll see that the new max bounds is going to be from one to four because the difference is three rather than two. So let's update that. All right, now we'll move up once again because we can see that D is a unique character. So be sure to add that to our used set. And our new max bounds is five. So one to five. So that is a length of four. All right, let's continue. So the next character we check is again at index up, which is going to be the letter A. Well, we can see that A is already in our set used. So we're going to remove the element that is at the lower bound, which is B. So we'll remove B because we're not including that in our window anymore. So we'll shift that there and we'll move low up. So low is going to be at index two now. And our max bound is not going to change because we shortened the window. Next, we check the character index up again. It's still A. And we can see that we've already used A. So again, we'll remove the character A from our set. We'll move this here and we'll shift down or we'll shift up low. So it'll be at three now. And our new range is three to five. And again, that's not the max bounds. And now we can see that when we want to add the character at index up, it's A and we don't have A in our used set. So we'll add that here and we'll shift up here and we'll check if our new bounds is greater than our max bounds. Well, we can see that we go from three to six and the difference is three, but the difference of our max bounds is four. So we don't update anything here. Next, we check if the character at index up, which is B is in our used set. It is not, so we can add it there. So we'll add B here, we'll move up. And now we can see that our new bound goes from three to seven. Well, this is a max length substring now, but we've already found one that is of the same length. So it doesn't make sense to update it. We don't have to update it. So we'll just keep it the same. All right, let's move on to the next character. So we already have a C here. So we'll remove the character at index low. So that's a C, we'll remove that here. And let's shift everything down. So we have this and we'll move low to index four and we don't change max bounds. All right, again, let's check to see if we can add the character at index up. Well, we can because C is no longer in the used set. So let's adjust this, we'll add C here. And of course we will move up by one index. And now our new max bounds is going to be still one to five, but we can see here that from four to eight, that is also of length four. So it doesn't really matter, we can choose one or the other. All right, next, let's take the character at index up. That's a C. Well, we've already used a C. So let's take a look at removing the lower character, the lower bounds character, and that's D. So let's remove D. So we shift this here and we can move low up. And of course, max bounds not gonna change. And now we check again, the character at index up is still here. So we remove the character at index low. So we'll remove that, we'll shift this down, we'll move low up. And we do it again. Well, again, we're going to find that we still have a C. So we remove the character at index low. So this is going to shift up and we'll remove B. And now we only have the character C. Well, again, we can see here that C has been used. So at this point, we're gonna have an empty set because we're going to remove this here. And now low and up are on the same index. Now at this point, we can add the character C because at index up, we have C, but we don't have any C in used. So we'll add that here and we'll shift up by one. And now we're at the end. So this is the last step. So here we have the character A at index up that is currently not in our used set. So we can add it. And we end up with a bounds of eight to nine, which only has a length of one, whereas our max bounds has a length of four. Therefore, we can keep our max bounds. And this is the end of the string which means that these are going to be the boundaries that we use. So from this, we can use string slicing to figure out what characters are from this range. So we go to index one, that's right here. And we go to index five, that's right here. So we take all the characters from index one up to, but not including index five, which is going to yield a string, which is B, A, 
C, D. And that is going to be our longest substring. So that is the sliding window technique. It's a very efficient technique and let's put it in action through code. So we can start off with our empty method, longest unique substring, and we'll take a parameter string. So the first thing to do is just to account for that edge case where our string is empty. We can easily do that by saying if the length of string is equal to zero, we can just return an empty string. And this is the case where we're returning an actual substring uh, instead of returning the length of the substring. There are problems that I know online that ask you to return the length of the substring, and we can actually take a look at how we would mod modify this code. It's very easy to actually modify this code. It's just one or two lines that have to be changed. So we start off by just checking this edge case, and now we can start. So we'll set our lower and upper bounds. Low and up is equal to zero and one. And then we also want to keep track of our max bounds. So max bounds is equal to zero, one. So as we saw before, this is just telling us what our current largest difference bounds are. So one minus zero is one, which means the current longest substring that we've seen is of length one. All right, next is to create our used set. So we'll say used is equal to string at index low. And that's just actually going to be at index zero. We're just adding the first character to our set. Next comes the iteration. So we'll say while up is less than the length of string. Now we have to check something. If the string at the current up index is in used, if that's the case, that means we've seen this character. So we have to shorten our window by increasing our lower bound. And if we're going to increase the lower bound, then we have to remove the character that was previously at that lower bound. So we'll say use.remove string at index low, and then we'll increase the lower bound, low plus equals one. Now, otherwise we can say else, so at this point, if the character at index up is not in used, that means it's a new character. So we can add it to used and then we can make our window larger. So we'll say used dot add string at index up and then we'll increase the upper bound up plus equals one. And finally, we have to check if our new upper and lower bounds has a greater difference than our max bounds. So if up minus low is greater than max bounds at index one, minus max bounds at index zero. And if that's the case, that means we have a new max bounds. Max bounds is equal to low up. And that's all that we have to do in this function. So finally, we can return the substring. So we'll just use string slicing here. We'll say string at max bounds bracket zero, going up to but not including max bounds bracket one. All right, let's test this code. Let's say we want to print the longest unique substring for the string that we did before. So this is going to be A, B, A, C, D, A, B, C, C, A. So we should expect that we get this string right here. Let's see if we get that. We run this and we can see we get B, A, C, D. Now there are a few modifications we can make. Let's say we wanted to get the last longest substring. Well, that's an easy change. On line 12, rather than saying greater than, we can say greater than or equal to. So that means anytime we see a new bounds that has a greater difference or equal to difference than the current max bounds, then we'll just update it. So we should see here that we get D, A, B, C instead. And we run this and we do get D, A, B, C. All right, so that's that first modification. Now, the second one is suppose rather than getting the string itself, we wanted to get the length of the string. Well, we can do that through a few changes. So the first thing is on line two, rather than returning an empty string, we can return zero. And then on the last line, on line 14, we can change this so instead of returning a string slice, we can return the difference of the max bounds. So return max bounds at index one, that's the upper bound minus the lower bound at index zero. So we run this and now we can see that we get four. Four is indeed the longest length of any longest substring in our string. So those are two different modifications and those should work for any scenario that you encounter with these. So that's it for this video and I hope this was helpful.